just a little tidbit there. All right, so, um, but that is an interesting thing. So with the aggressive, if you see a directional change, it just makes a buy sell signal. It doesn't have a neutral, okay? If it pops out of being in a strong bullish or strong bearish uh, trend, then it just makes a signal right away. Whereas progressive and traditional, it will wait out those neutral markets, right? And it will actually wait for a yellow to red or a yellow to green progression before it creates a buy or sell signal. Um, so like I was saying just a moment ago, I personally uh, use progressive. It just matches my style. And that doesn't mean that as soon as you turn it on, flip it on progressive because Jeff knows best. Everyone's got their own trading style. So by all respects, pick what actually works for you. Uh, practice with it. Get used to it. And, um, and pick out what you actually want to use. Um, so I've switched over to progressive. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my sensitivity slider. And I'm just going to drag it back and forth a little bit. Now, one nice thing about going through and circling out where my uh, buy sell signals were is that then I can see if I'm getting better signals once I go through and fine tune it and drag the sensitivity slider back and forth. Um, if I were looking at this, let's see. My choices are do I actually want to get signals for those retracements or do I want to ignore them and just hold for a longer period of time? And that is going to be a harder choice you actually need to make on your own. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I'm going to need to use a higher sensitivity, but I'm still getting some signals that aren't exactly what I want. So what I would do is I use a higher sensitivity, but then I also go through and filter out when I'll actually receive arrows. Um, down here at the bottom, you have a section that is for filters. Okay? And filters specifically will go through and they will check the price bar that receives a signal they will go through and check, is that signal price bar an inside day? If it is, don't make the arrow wait until we get a new one. Is it a higher or lower price bar? If it is, skip it, wait for a new signal bar. Higher high, lower low, also effective. As you go through and turn these on, you can actually see the arrows that apply being removed. And that's nice, right there. Let me go ahead and show you immediately why these filters can be useful. If I switch it back to the default real quick, if you remember that patch of buy sell signals that just didn't work, I mean it was just um, a, basically a pile of whipsaw, right? If you took any of those trades, you would have bounced back and forth and uh, lost quite a bit. But as soon as I turned on this option to filter out higher, high, uh, excuse me, higher, lower, it got rid of all of those whipsaw signals. Okay, and now all of a sudden we have one buy signal, we have a trend that goes all the way up from there. We have a profit of about $8,900 on a mini account, which is going to be, uh, what, 713 ticks? I'm just using my trusty dollar calculator here, by the way. Click, drag out, and it'll show two points and how much money you would have made. Um, the funny thing is, honestly, just making that one change almost makes me want to just use the default again. Now, I was going through and fine-tuning, but I still wasn't getting exactly what I wanted. Um, but now it's, it's actually not too bad. Uh, what about inside days? We check that. That's interesting. This signal that we got before right up here, if we uncheck this and take a look at this bar, let me go ahead and zoom in so you can take a look. Okay, This signal came in on this price bar right here, and it is also an inside day. It uh, actually traded within the high and low of the previous price bar, so this is just an inside uh, price bar. If we filter out any signal that comes on an inside day, then all of a sudden that one is ignored. It just so happens that on the very next price bar, then we did get the signal, and then it told us to go uh, short. So it actually only lasted one bar, but at, there are times where actually clicking on inside days can have a really great effect. Um, higher low, higher high. We'll see what that does. If I get any changes to tinkering with that one. Not much there. Let's see, what else can we do? We could do arrow... Uh, ch Arrow appearances on any color change, which is an interesting way of doing it as well, but I rarely use it, to be honest. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So for the daily chart, using just the traditional 72 and turning on just a couple of filters, or even just the higher, uh, lower, that actually isn't too bad. I would just want to be able to attach a trailing stop. Um, the only problem is that you do have sections like right here where you hit the retracement and get taken out. Also, this would be one right here. For that reason, you might actually attach your trailing stops to, say, the Bulls and Bears Blue Light system. Blue Light system is an interesting option in that you can actually attach your stop loss to this Blue Light as a calculated stop loss tool. Um, 
And what makes this interesting is if you do bullish bearish for the blue light, it will only show the blue light um, on the side of the market that agrees with your last buy sell signal. Okay? Um, to give you an example of what that means, right here we got a sell signal from bulls and bears. Okay? And the blue light hits and closes us out, what, three price bars later? Okay? And then we don't have any blue light for three price bars, and then all of a sudden we have a new blue light up here that goes down. Um, back here, we have blue light, but we only have it across the bottom of the market, and that's because the last signal pointed up, so the blue light's only going the direction that the market actually, or that the last buy sell signal showed. Um, what I like to do is set your blue light to show on both bullish and bearish sides, okay? And you can see immediately that it goes through and actually expands the number of blue dots that you get, your uh, blue light. And then you can use it to re-enter the market. Uh, calculated stop loss tools, as a general rule, are used to exit, right? They are your trailing stop uh, function. But what a lot of people don't realize or use as much as they should is actually putting in these as both and then using a blue light to re-enter if you get taken out. Uh, this right here would be an example of where we could do something like that. We received a signal to go short, and the market almost immediately retraced, which, honestly, for that reason alone, I'd probably actually add in a different indicator and try something different on this daily chart. But had you been on this chart and you decided just to take the trade to go short at the mark of this next order, you would have been taken out, let's see, probably right about here. Okay? What you can do at that point is you can actually go through and put in a new sell order. You can set that sell order to attach to the blue light, which is below the market. So you put in your stop to go short as an entry price, not as a market order, and you attach it to the blue light. You move forward with each blue light, and then when the market drops down and hits, then you enter into the market to go short again, which would be right at this price bar right here to go short. And then you add, uh, add a new stop loss up above, and then you actually take the ride down uh, with the blue light on the other side, which is an interesting way to go through it and adjust that as well. Um, looking at this daily chart, using the bulls and bears, not bad. Um, but just the default, I'm catching these retracements, and so it's not really matching up with what I'm using for this time frame. Instead, maybe I should try something different or something that's going to follow along a little bit more for the daily. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to delete all these tools I've drawn. I'm not going to delete the chart. I deleted the chart instead of just deleting the tools. Okay, that's one way to remove all the drawn tools. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in, along with turning back on my inside A filter. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. All right, I'm going to try adding in another indicator. I'm going to add in specifically the advantage lines. Um, I'm going to right-click, chart overlays, and advantage lines. Left-click. And this is actually going to turn on uh, advantage lines by sell signals in the chart as well. Now, what we see here, if we go ahead and expand this, drag this down, we're actually getting a new set of buy sell signals. These, however, are being made by the advantage lines instead. Now, the advantage lines is based off of um, moving average theory, but it's not the same. We've made it our own. Um, we actually hold that calculation and formula close to our chest, but it's also going to have some fun options in there to quickly adjust as well, just like with the bulls and bears. Um, this one, what I would actually do is probably pair my buy sell signals together with the advantage lines, or excuse me, with the bulls and bears, but Let's see, what am I seeing here looking in the chart? I always try and be honest with myself when I'm looking in the window, and if I'm not getting the signals that I want, I'll actually go through and fine-tune it just using the period shown here. I can actually try using larger periods for the second or third point. Let's see. Match it up with the bulls and bears, match it up with the bulls and bears. That's not too bad there as well. You know, this daily chart, with the swings it's had, it's not working for me, especially since it's just barely become the new front month. The volume wasn't high enough earlier on, so we're going to be getting signals on lower volatility, lower volume. I'm thinking let's actually drop down to a time frame we trade. And for me, that would be uh, 60 minutes or lower. All right, now once we drop down to the 60 minute, now I'm seeing something I can actually work with. Uh, here on the 60 minute chart, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to candlesticks for my appearance. And I'm going to go ahead and I don't want to expand it too much because I want you to see all of the arrows in the chart. 
Let's go ahead and just take a look at this right here.